And now I present to you James B. Madonna and the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. Okay, welcome everyone. Welcome to Progressive Discussions. Happy St. Patrick's Day week, 2016. Uh, St. Patrick's Day is next week. And I just want to say gre uh, greetings to all Irish people worldwide, including Irish Americans, and the very best place uh, to purchase your imported uh, Irish uh, uh, souvenirs and authentic gifts is to go to XavierGifts.com. That's uh, X A V I. ERGifts.com uh, and tell them uh, Mega Life 21 James P. Madonna sent you uh, for the finest gifts. Uh, I want to say greetings to everyone. Uh, my uh, Facebook administrators, uh, uh, Sash Boyle, uh, Mick Von Raven, uh, Anthony Laura. Um, and uh, yeah everyone um, I don't think I have that many left to be honest with you um, yeah that pretty that pretty much uh, covers it because um, there's not that many that are proactive <laughs> doing their job that's why there's not many left um, but, um, and to my near dear friend, greetings in Osaka, Japan, Miho. Hello, Miho. Um, my name is James P. Madonna. I am coming to you from the Newsletter Censored, uh, Research Center in Northeast New Jersey. And I am in green, my green eyes odd and my funky looking green sunglasses here with the, got the Blackthorn Irish Shillelagh from XavierGifts.com. Uh, I would like to introduce my co-host and mentor and the founder of Newsletter Censored in 1977, the Reverend Dr. William J. Eisenman. How are you feeling this week, sir? Poop. Well, all right, you're alive. Um, Barely. A, um, a, uh, a gentleman that myself and uh, uh, voiceover artist William H. Morrow the third, no personally, has passed away. Um, Sarkis, his name is Sarkis, Armenian man, and uh, him and his wife, lovely people. Uh, you know, um, I believe her name is Margaret. Um, amazing, yeah. But he he was very ill and he passed away. So I send my condolences to Margaret. Margaret, uh, she's amazing. She's in her mid 80s and she drives and she runs around and and she's as alert as can be and she talks just like you and I you know I mean you would never think she's in her mid 80s and uh, uh, she took care of herself I guess uh, very smart woman but anyway my condolences um, I, I purchased another very large uh, corned beef brisket so all you bars and pubs and restaurants that are too fucking cheap to have all you can eat corned beef and cabbage hmm. I don't need you anymore I have I will prepare my own all you can eat buffet corned beef brisket um 
What can I say? You know, uh, I'm, I'm happy that Bernie Sanders has become more aggressive during the debates. Uh, it's getting uh, more heated. The heat is being turned up, naturally, because 2016 is just moving along quickly. And I think Bernie Sanders, I want to congratulate his uh, um, very surprising win in Michigan. Mm -hmm by a landslide. Um, he, he wasn't the favorite to win. Mm -hmm. Of course, the media has Hillary, uh, you know, winning all the time. Uh, and uh, they, they feel Bernie doesn't stand a chance, but Bernie is uh, hanging in there. He's not that many delegates behind Hillary, uh, considering the states that are left. Now, uh, Florida is next is this Tuesday, I think. This coming mm -hmm. Tuesday? Uh, the Florida primary is coming up soon. And there was a huge rally. I watched the YouTube video. A tr tremendous, uh, enthusiastic, loud rally um, of people in Miami, Florida, and a lot of young people there. And uh, it's good to see that many young people, many millennials will be, uh, 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 they said that they will be voting for the very first time mm -hmm. for Bernie Sanders. Now the California primary is not all that far away either from what I hear. And California should supply a lot of delegates to whoever wins it. Yeah, but they're already, they already added the super delegates to Hillary's Accumulation. So they, they, they're giving her superdelegates. That's correct. They're handing it to her on a silver platter. platter. And, and I know I'm reading a lot of articles about how dastardly <laughs> that uh, Deborah Wasserkant shits is and how many Democrats would like to see her step down or leave. And uh, I think she is responsible for the, uh, partially responsible for the cheating of handing uh, Hillary the, the uh, unearned super delegates, and I'm sure there are higher powers above her, the top one percent that would like to see Hillary just be handed all the super delegates. Now there are people out there, there are ultra liberal Democrats that are obsessed with political correct correctness, political correctness. And they, all they care about is making history by having the first woman in the White House, just like they wanted to make history having the, of having the first African-American in the White House. Not looking at the fact that the both of them, Hillary's much worse, but the both of them are corporatist Democrats, just like Bill Clinton was. But they have selfish agendas because uh, every <laughs> lobbying group happens to have very selfish agendas. They don't look at the whole picture. They don't look at the society and government and the future of our planet and the future of uh, their children and their grandchildren and so on and so forth. They just look at what they want, what they want. And uh, that's why we have lobbyists. It's selfishness, basically. And uh, like Jesse Ventura says, you don't have to meet with them and comply. <laughs> well, well, you won't you get do if you ain't gonna if you want campaign contributions. That's what Bernie Sanders said in Florida. Yeah. If somebody, if a Republican said, you know what, I spoken to all the scientists and yeah, climate change is real. It's mm -hmm. very real, and we got to do something about it right away before it's uh, irreputable. I mean, uh, 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 before it it's too late. The tipping point. Right. As soon as that happens, Bernie Sanders says the same day, mm -hmm. the Koch brothers and, and the top 1% will say, you're not getting any more money. Bingo. We're cutting you off. Yeah. The fossil fuel industry. Yeah. So uh, this is the thing. You know, yes, Jesse Ventura was right. You don't have to meet with any delegates, but then you have to raise money the way Bernie's doing it. $27 at a time on, on average per person. But unfortunately, that's what we have with the wonderful capitalist system, which has always been rigged for the, uh, the wealthy. 
and ever since the Industrial Revolution, it as has, Adam Smith said, it has failed. Who supposedly is the father of capitalism? Lovely. He said, "Whenever two capitalists meet, yeah, a conspiracy of trade is occurring." Well, they're always looking okay. to make the deal, like Donald Trump says, right? Yeah, but the deal is always against the country and the people. And and all for them, yeah. It's all yeah. for them, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. the very concept of buying low and selling high is is uh, dishonest in itself. You're, you That's know, why under God's economic standards will never change. You're taking an item, let's say it's my, it's the new call bell. Lovely, cr lovely crisp sound. Let's say a company, a, a, a United States-based company, wants to make these. Well, first of all, they won't make them in the U.S. They'll have them made in China. That's correct. For uh, pennies an hour, right. whatever the hell they pay, 32 cents an hour, whatever. Okay, and then they'll have them shipped here, and uh, of course they won't be tariffed like they should be. They should. They won't be paying the tax, bringing it back in. And it should be made here. Then the, you know. Then they should be made here. That's or like right. Bernie says, they won't. If they don't want to comply, they will not be allowed to sell their products in the United That's States. That's correct. Now buy buy low and sell high. Well, uh, supposedly originally. In capitalism, there is a reasonable profit, a reasonable markup to be made. Now, what these businesses, I'm sure, do is they're probably making much, much more than 100% um, profit. You Profits know, for corporations have gone up by 21%, like, and taxes for corporations have gone down by 5%. You know, like like one one stingy, greedy businessman says to me, "Well, uh, James, what do you consider a fair profit on a product?" Well, I told him it sure isn't. It sure isn't um, going from a uh, hundred dollars your cost to uh, four hundred dollars retail. Mm -hmm. That's not a fair profit. Mm -hmm. That's highway robbery in layman's terms. So, a fair profit would be, in their eyes, whatever will sell, and if it doesn't sell, they'll supposedly lower it. But making that, making an astronomical profit, let's take fine jewelry, that's just a legal way of just uh, st stealing from people. It's deception. They lie in their advertisement. I see it all the time. They lie in their advertisement, and um, by the way, how's the, the frying pan? It's working. It's doing all right, huh? Yeah. All right, okay. But um, what they do in the advertisement is they take some truth. They take a little bit of truth, and then I guess they embellish, and they, they make it much more important than what it is, and they might add a little tidbits of lies here and there. You know, and then you what you have is an infomercial. But uh, yeah, the very concept of uh, the buy low, sell high uh, version of capitalism is uh, is crooked in, in, in itself. So, um, but anyway, uh, so Hillary, uh, um, I hope they dig up a lot of dirt on her emails, the investigation, um, and. Uh, Theoretically, that's not going to go anywhere. Because they won't, what they've done. Because they won't let it go anywhere. No, what they've done is, and they did it to uh, Colin Powell too. All the emails that are marked classified, right, were classified after she had anything to do with them. Just like Colin Powell's. Oh. Some of Colin Powell's. Emails are now classified. Oh, really? But they weren't at the time he was oh. dealing with them. So that ain't going to go anywhere. There will be no indictments or anything of that nature for and, that. And as far as you've heard, there's no other, besides classified information, there's no other dirt connected with Hillary's emails? 
Not with the emails. There's plenty of dirt otherwise. Oh, she she's an easy person okay, to debate. Plenty of dirt. I got I mean she is easy as can be for anybody to debate her in a political race. I mean I mean a uh, a uh, 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 could you imagine? Donald Trump will have a field day with Hillary Clinton. Speaking of debate, there was a debate on Thursday, you know. This past Thursday? That's correct. I Republicans. Again? Again. I missed it. I'll have to go to YouTube. That's right. Another debate. They don't exactly... Who's on CNN? Interesting. CNN, huh? That's correct. Yes, yeah, CNN, the uh, <laughs> supposedly impartial uh, network. That's a joke. CNN, um, well, let's just say, you know, it really is tough for Bernie to um, get the word out if he, if he can only do it on the Internet because none of the mainstream media is really putting out his material, I, I don't really see they all think it's fantastical. Well, they think it's fantastical because yeah. they don't want to acknowledge that the man is is truthful in what he says. They don't, they don't like his pro plan. They just don't like it. No. They don't want the, they don't want the rich to pay their fair share in taxes. That's great. They don't want the uh, 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 education and health care to be rights correct. instead of privileges. They want to privatize every damn thing. That's correct. And they don't want to follow the, pa the path of Germany and Scandinavia. And, and, and you know, and, and it's oligarchy like uh, Jimmy Carter said to Oprah Winfrey in that video clip. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a, what we have, have is an oligarchy. And he, what he was saying was, uh, what Jimmy Carter was saying was, uh, you know, now you have like blue states and red states. He says, we didn't really have that 30 years no. ago. You no. know, and uh, and that's, that's right. Campaign financing, corruption, uh, Citizens United, so on and so on and so on. Uh, but, um, you know, uh, so anyway, that's about I don't have any products to really uh, complain about, so I don't really have any Chisler's Hall of Shame inductees. <coughs> so uh, it's just a pleasant St. Patrick's Day uh, week show, uh, 2016. So anyway, let us sink our teeth into these readings. Um, oh. Speaking of products, consumer products, I've been seeing uh, laws, uh, lawsuit commercials late at night about talcum powder causing uh, cancer with women, uh, either ovarian, or uterine, or both. Now, why hasn't the FDA pulled talcum off the market if this is the case? I just want you people why to Why haven't they pulled off sucralose? Sucralose causes cancer now. Yes, and, and uh, Robert Atkins used to uh, be all excited about it when it first came out. You know, uh, uh, I mean, why aren't the health food vitamin uh, nutritional companies that make, let's say, uh, whey protein powder for athletes, why are they using sucralose and not something safe like stevia? Mm -hmm. Natural and safe like stevia. Why are they continuing to use uh, uh, chemical artificial sweeteners that are hazardous to your health if, ha if it's a nutrition company? Why did they change the name from Splenda to Sucralose? Well, Splenda, problem, Splenda was the, uh, like the nickname for Sucralose. Yes. And just like uh, NutraSweet yeah, was, the, was the bullshit nickname for aspartame, aspartame aspartame and the word nutri sweet reminds me of uh, the republican pet names like the right to work state or the clear skies amendment or citizens, Cit united. citizens united it has a positive ring to it citizens uniting getting together like the citizens good. like they want uh the one percent to have all the money and control everything you know? right. So, Nutri Sweet 
is like a Republican pet name for aspartame. So, but it's a nutritional company. Why are they using harmful chemical artificial sweeteners? You know, so I have no idea. Anyway, I want to thank uh, Undercover Bob and the Renaissance Man Can Whoa. Create for doing a, uh, a rather amusing show with me the other day. It's on the internet now. Um, thank you for, to the both of you. All right, let's sink our teeth into these readings. I need some tea. Two former top aides to Governor Chris, uh, Christie knew they were engaged in wrongdoing when they closed access lanes to the George Washington Bridge to punish a political rival yeah, the, the mayor because of, they lied about it. I think it was the mayor of Fort Lee, New Jersey. Federal prosecutors said in court papers filed on Friday. Okay. Former Port Authority Deputy Executive Director Bill Baroni, Boney Baroni, and Bridget Ann Kelly, the former Deputy oh. Chief of Staff to the Governor, created a massive traffic jam to punish Fort Lee Democratic Mayor Mark Sokolich. Oh, naturally, a Democratic Mayor was punished. And engaged in lies and deceit by creating a cover story that the lane reductions were part of a traffic study. The filing by U.S. Attorney Paul Fishman and his office was in response to the defendant's motion to dismiss federal charges against them, which include the alleged misuse of Port Authority resources. The defendants argued that the charges should be thrown out because, among other things, they are based on vague federal laws that have been twisted to fit the facts of the case. They also said that they did not have fair warning that a federal statute applied to their actions. Baroni and Kelly were indicted on multiple counts related to the lane closures last year, while another former top Port Authority executive, David Wildstein, pleaded guilty to his part in the alleged scheme. Prosecutors said in Friday's filing that the attempt by Baroni and Kelly to conceal the true purpose of their actions negates their contention that they lacked fair warning, that their conduct was wrong. They said the use of a sham story about the traffic study to explain the closures was a lie that demonstrated conscious wrongdoing. They argued that the indictments against Kelly and Baroni sufficiently alleged the misappropriation of Port Authority property. The Port Authority, after all, is in the business of facilitating transportation and commerce, not purposely creating traffic problems in a town as a way to send a personal rebuke to a public official for not endorsing a particular candidate. The prosecutors said stealing agency services for personal use is the equivalent of pocketing agency property or money. And it does not matter that their motive was to punish Mayor Sokolich rather than to enrich themselves personally. Yeah, they want to sock it to Sokolich. Levity bells. Prosecutors also said that the government plans to introduce 
evidence at trial regarding the costs of the alleged scheme, including the money spent to redo a legitimate traffic study that was going on at the same time and had to be scrapped because of the lane closures. Prosecutors said any person of ordinary intelligence, let alone veteran public officials like defendants, would know it is prohibited to defraud a public agency of its resources, especially to accomplish an objective fundamentally at odds with the agency's public mission. Guilty! Guilty! Well, as far as I'm concerned, all conservatives are guilty and um, they all have loads of skeletons in their closet including the corporatist blue dog democrats uh, they all have much dirt to uncover and um, it's um, you know well it, it was my opinion that I think I, I feel that Bernie Sanders should have been uh, aggressive from the very first debate but that was his choice he wanted to hand her, handle Hillary with kid gloves because she's a woman and be a gentleman. And you see where it got him? She kept on punching him really hard in the balls, in the old culumes. So he yeah, had to get... The problem, the problem is not so much that. The problem is that she has these supporters left over. She already ran once. Well... She's got these supporters. Bernie said she she the had old, down she, there she had old time supporters from yeah. the southern states when Bill and Clinton, organization when Bill Clinton was the was the governor of Arkansas she had they had all these people that they knew down yonder in their I say I say son southern states and from her her presidential run. Right in uh, two thousand eight. Yeah, she knew. She knew people. She she yeah. has been in the game before. There you go. That's what you're saying. Hey, there she she was nasty and mean to to Barack Obama when yes, she ran against that's him. That's exactly correct. Shaking her head and yelling and ma 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 with that 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 annoying voice of hers. Uh, but uh, and you know, Elizabeth Warren. There's a mystery. There is a mystery wrapped in a fortune cookie of why she has been so low profile and quiet during this, as you know, a, a campaign like not coming forth to announce who she's endorsing took her forever, which I was shocked because she's uh, definitely one of the finest progressive warriors. I mean. Uh, uh, but uh, you know this this uh, Tulsi Gabbard, she mm -hmm. is a sharp cookie. This woman is is very impressive. A congresswoman from Hawaii and and war veteran, Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, did you hear her when she talks? No. No, she's been o opening up for Bernie uh, at all the rallies. Uh, uh, she's uh, yeah, she's good. She's good. She's um, and I, I you know. For me to brag like that, I mean, I'm impressed with her. So anyway, she knows a lot about foreign policy, that, that's for sure. But anyway, continue. One morning last spring, a North Jersey birder was sitting in his living room, minding his own business, when he spied a distant black bird atop one of the many wood duck nesting houses that populate the large pond in a nearby natural area. He grabbed his camera, <laughs> ran to the closest observation point. When he arrived, he saw a crow perched ominously atop the nesting box while mom and dad wood duck swam nervously underneath. It was nesting season. They were no, uh, no doubt concerned about the passel of eggs inside the box. 
The uh, crow wanted to make himself an omelet. The crow finally flew off, and the female wood duck flew up to the box and reclaimed her turf. When the birder glanced around the pond, he counted at least six crows standing on nesting boxes around the lake. You said birder. The no, guy who watches birds. It sounded like burger, like a hamburger. Birder, okay. Well, what the hell would he be watching burgers for? Because the way you pronounce it, it's, it, it, it could be misconstrued as burger. And then you get me hungry, but I brought a good lunch anyway. Several crows headed for the wood duck box nearest the birder and drove off. The female duck. Two crows sat atop the box and two more circled around. Quack, quack, quack. After all, four, four crows flew. Both the male and the female duck returned to the box only to be strafed again by crows. Ah! Really? One crow even craned his head <gasps> and peeked inside the nest <sighs> before they all eventually flew away. Here's what the heck was going on. The crows, legendary for their intelligence and mischief, yeah, they're like ravens, you know, same family. Did not appear to be after the eggs. What the hell do they want? And the crows did not attack the ducks so much as to show them who was the boss. Yeah, I wonder if they're omnivorous. I wonder what they are. I think they're, I think they're just like, like, like opportunistic feeders, maybe. Like, they'll eat dead carrion, you know, they'll eat anything they can they get their beaks on. Oddly, the crows had staged their little raids in silence. So the birder wasn't sure which kind of crow was responsible. New Jersey is home to two types of crows. The American crow and the fish crow. They are virtually indistinguishable except for their calls. They always come by early in the morning. I wonder where they all go when they leave. The fish crow is more likely to have a southern drawl. A southern draw? Yeah. I'll say there, son. I say. You mean they talk like Heckle and Jekyll or something? <laughs> They're from South Carolina. <laughs> <Man. laughs> yeah. oh, so man. this is my life. Seven bells for the crow family. I think Raven... It, you know, it is true, ravens are the smartest birds in the world. Ooh. And one of the most intelligent animals, period. They, they're, they're very impressive looking. <coughs> what had the birder witnessed? Crow slew Rick Raddus of New Jersey. Audubon agreed to be the consulting detective on this case. I've watched crows and ravens since I was a kid. I've never seen that behavior before. But only once with wood ducks around. I've seen fish crows and American crows look into the cre and look into and create a ruckus <sighs> around nest, nest boxes on a number of occasions. Crows are regular nest robbers, and wood duck eggs would be tempting, but crows couldn't get through the little hole. They ended up eating crow. Mr. Raddus wondered if the crows might have been scouting for their nemesis's owls. Oh, owls uh, attack crows? I thought owls were bigger than crows. Oh, well, owls are, are nocturnal, predatory. They're That's raptors, right. but uh, I guess they're... Um, I know pigeons are victims of raptors, as well as rodents. Yeah, but pigeons are smaller. That's what I'm saying. 
No, an owl. Crows are smaller than an owl. It depends on so what. So the owl should be after the crows. It depends on what species of owl. Uh, I, I, I just, well, I, if, if, if crows are in a pack, Ugh. they'll gang up uh, like a wolf pack. They will, uh, you know, be a, well, be, a, be a force to reckon with. But if they're not in a pack, you know, but crows are not nocturnal; they're they're diurnal. So owls are. They urinate. No, they owls are sleeping when crows are awake. Uh, there's a nest box in Great Swamp that year. After year has search, screech me, excuse me, and that year after year has screech owls. And from time to time, I've seen crows land on the box, look inside, and start screaming for others to come and look. Mr. Raddus said that legendary bird expert Roger Tory Peterson once told him to look at scenes of fender benders and other road incidents. He said you will almost always see a crow around, looking down from a pole or a tree, checking out the action. Peterson's other crow theory, according to Mr. Raddus, crows are smart enough to get bored and to hassle other bird species just for the fun of it. So, food, predator, curiosity, or boredom. Who knows the mind of a crow? Thank God. Okay. Well, I just want to remind everyone that everything we discuss politically is part of our series, except Capitalism in a Conch Shell. Except the crows. Except the crows. There's the conch. Soaking that conch energy. I had the, the best Mexican food I ever had in this uh, popular chain that opened up a new location on Route 46 here east in, uh, in um, Lodi, I believe it's Lodi. Um, it's, uh, <coughs> it's, it's a formal place. You, you know, you, you go up to the counter with your tray. You know, they, they give you the food when it's ready, and you go sit down. You know, it's a, outstanding food. Mm -hmm. Outstanding. I had uh, four roast pork, they call carnitas, uh, a Mexican-style uh, soft tacos with uh, uh, a big slice of avocado in the middle. And, of course, I put their hottest hot sauce on them and uh, came with a side order of chips. And I put the green sauce on the chips, which is tomatillo. But anyway, excellent. Tomatillo. Uh, Los, uh, uh, it's called Los Cort. Nah, I, if I can't get it right, uh, oh, I don't want to pronounce it. But it, it's a great place. As testimony in Hulk Hogan's lawsuit against Gawker Media grew extremely Explicit on Tuesday. Gawker media? Gawker. Gawker. Like when somebody gawks at a woman? That's correct. <laughs> Let me tell you something, brother. <laughs> An attorney offered evidence that Hogan has publicly discussed sex and other intimate details about his life over the years. No, he wants a, he wants attention. He's not in the spotlight anymore. The testimony included detailed references to Hogan's sex life and sexual parts. In this case, they should call it his testicle money instead of testimony. Go ahead. In one audio clip from Bubba, the Love Sponge Clem's radio show, Clem and Hogan, who used to be friends, 
discuss the length of Hogan's penis. Did anybody inquire about the length of Hogan's penis? Or he just volunteers all this? Hogan, whose real name is Terry Malia. Terry, Terry Bollea, yes. Said he did these interviews and media spots in the persona of his Hulk Hogan character and not as he is in real life. Oh, so he did, uh, let me tell you, brother, he, you know, he did, he was in character. The testimony elicited Hogan's take on his famous public image versus his private life. At times, a discourse on celebrity culture and identity. Attorney Michael Sullivan asked Hogan if he was embarrassed by some of the immediate appearances pointing to a clip on the Hogan Knows Best reality show. In that snippet, shown for the jury, Hogan sat on a toilet, his pants around his ankles, talking to his wife on the phone. Lovely. Anything for attention, huh? Hogan said no, he was not embarrassed. Oh, no. It's part of the show. It's part of the good and bad of being an entertainer. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hogan also said he did not have a problem with news outlets discussing or even writing about the sex tape. It was only when Gawker broadcast an edited clip of the actual video that he said he began to suffer. I never had a problem with the article. My problem is the videotape. It's on the internet. It lives forever. True. Hogan said. Uh, well, even if you take the video off? Yep. Hogan said that when he had sex with Clem's wife, with Clem's best blessing. Oh, really? He did not know the encounter was being taped. Oh, for God's sakes. Hogan and his attorneys are suing Gawker for $100 million. <laughs> it was being taped without him knowing it. I just think that's real funny. Just did the thought of it. Saying that his <laughs> privacy was violated. Uh, <laughs> that he suffered. Emotionally. He suffered stress. emotionally during the sexual act or because it was... Because it was taped. <laughs> and the video was not something of legitimate public interest. Oh, no? I don't know about that. I think, I think that's a video that would uh, make somebody a ton of money. Although the trial has been chock full of salacious details, an interview Tuesday mentioned Hogan's fong-shaped tan line that was visible in the video. So Hogan um, wears a tong on the beach? Doesn't that seem a little gay? For a man? Eh. It's also a serious First Amendment case. The core issue. Did Gawker have the right to post one minute and 41 seconds of the sex tape, approximately nine seconds of it, actual sexual content? That's it? What's wrong with this guy? He doesn't know how to hide a camera? I think he's going to, go, going to run into fair use there. Nine, nine, you know? come. You said nine minutes or seconds? Nine, nine seconds. seconds of sexual Oh, content. big friggin' deal. The rest is Let's whatever. See. Let's see, nine seconds. 
Zing, 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 zing. That's it. Zing, 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 and it's over. That's not even time to get it in. It's like a rabbit. It's like a bunny rabbit. I hear they have very short uh, copulation uh, periods. Gawker says the publication was a legitimate scoop because Hogan had talked openly about his sex life before in forums such as the Howard Stern Show. Well, naturally, that's going to be on Howard's show. <laughs> the jury may have to grapple with questions about how celebrity affects expectations of privacy. Hogan attained pro wrestling stardom in the 1980s and 1990s, winning multiple championships. He also became a celebrity outside his Hulkamania fan base. He started with, uh, I believe, a AWA, Vern Gagne, out of Minneapolis, St. Paul, Minnesota. I remember a young Hogan starting with AWA. Many people did, actually. He appeared in movies and television shows, including VH1's Hogan Knows Best. Well, that reality show with his um, ex-wife and, and daughter, and um, I felt sorry for, for Hogan. His ex-wife was nagging him constantly. She had to do... She says, "Oh, we need to do. We need to re remake you. You got. We, we got to. I'm going to throw away all your your clothes, and we got to take you shopping to Ooh. update your fashion." He didn't want to do it. He liked his baggy genie pants from the '80s. He liked his fanny pack. Uh -huh. You know the thing that goes around your waist. Yes. He, he liked it. Oh, we are. Uh, that's the. That's out of style. That's 1980s. We we got to change you. We got to do this. Why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? Oh, she was on his back all the time. And it makes you wonder why some guys <laughs> don't want to be married. You know? <laughs> so. If John F. Kennedy were around today to write his book, Profiles in Courage, Mitt Romney, on the strength of his speech last week in Utah, would deserve a chapter. Really? For Romney gave a clarion call for sanity in this rather insane political year for Republicans. I got news for you. If, if, if JFK was alive today, I, I, I guarantee, I, 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 I feel that uh, FDR's second Bill of Rights would have become a reality if JFK uh, went on to serve two terms and survived, you know? Oh, yes. Some on the right denounce Romney. But Romney is trying to save Republicans from themselves. What is ironic? is that the right-wing echo chamber is doing what the left would love to do destroy conservatism that sounds like a great idea <laughs> you can say that Donald Trump isn't the mold isn't in the mold of Ronald Reagan well he's not a politician anymore. he is in the mold of a former a radio commentator, Father Charles Coughlin. First of all, Ronald Reagan is an actor. Uh, he was a he was a movie star turned a very incompetent Screen Actors Guild president. From what movie legend said, Hollywood said, and then he became president of the best puppet the Republican Party and the top one percent ever had. So, you know. And Donald Trump is, no, is not a puppet by a long shot. Uh, radio commentator Father Cog Charles Coughlin and former Louisiana politician Huey Long, both of whom appeal to the worst in people. Demigods like Trump can rise quickly. 
but it doesn't last. And when they fall, not only do they go down, but so do their followers. Yeah, and their reputation is severely tarnished. I mean, look at the look at the type of people Donald Trump attracts to his rallies. You know, I mean, uh, hey, I was shocked the uh, NRA is, is supporting Bernie Sanders, to be honest with you, but Trump has all the white supremacists. Good. Donald Trump, speaking of the devil, appears invulnerable to attack. The 2008 Republican Party nominee, John McCain, is deemed no hero. Well, he was but a loser for being captured. No, no he's not a loser, but he, but to be a POW doesn't make you a hero. I mean, to survive it is very impressive. To get out of it alive means a lot. I mean, but a war hero? You know. Mitt Romney, the 2012 standard bearer, blew the chance to dethrone a rival president, says Trump. Even the Pope should just mind his own business, Trump says. So anybody who disagrees with Donald Trump should mind their own business. The slings and arrows of Ted Cruz and Marco Rubio are swatted away by Trump as if they were petty annoyances. Well, they're like little gnats they're like little gnats yeah they're they're you know little marco rubio you know like trump says bing 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 he's like a little boy bing bing bing, bing little bing. marco little marco and and the other one and ted cruz ted cruz with a voice like that he ain't going nowhere a pointy nose he's got a he's got a a a a, uh, a little too much twinkle in his eye him and his father he has a so he has a a, a, a gay pedophile kind of look to him. Ted Cruz, you know what I mean? He, well, he, he's out of his mind. He's an evangelical, you know. You know, And they all pray like they're constipated, you know, squinting their eyes like they're going to take a big shit, you know, their hands up in the air. You know, so God hears them better when their hands are up, arms are up in the air. You know, it's their antenna. The size of his hands, really? Trump seems to be saying, is that the best you can do? In this year a of implosion of the political process, all our, un, all our understood conventions have been torn asunder. So while the elder statesmen of the party, like Romney, may castigate Trump, not castrate, castigate. Castigate. Yeah, thank you. Trump and warn of the pending apocalypse. Their voices are drowned out by the sounds of the cheering throngs welcoming the man who will save them from those who had tried and failed. The weak, like Jeb Bush. The incapable, like Rubio. The vile, like Cruz. And losers, like McCain. And yes, Romney. I would like to say, uh, well, I, 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 it's not a belated happy birthday because I, I actually found out it was his birthday. This. Uh, during the evening of his actual birthday. But I, I would like to uh, say a belated happy birthday to uh, Mr. Glenn Bean of the state of Wisconsin. Happy birthday to you. Uh, better late than never. But I, I, I posted something on his, his uh, Facebook profile. Mr. Bean. Yeah, Mr. Bean. Now, do you have a, a short one before lunch or do you just want to cut for lunch? Cut for lunch? Okay. We're gonna have lunch. All right. I got some. I got two big Alaskan wild salmon salad sandwiches with with a f 
seafood curry and a banana. As a, a China, as a Chinese uh, woman said, banana, she called it a balala banana. one time. A balala. She couldn't pronounce the word banana. So, what do you, what can you do? We're going to try one more time to see if our uh, technical crew can add uh, William Hamilton Moore the third to do promo. We're going to give it one more shot, uh, unless some some force is trying to throw a monkey wrench um, at us. I don't have no idea, but that's why you've been seeing this show in like four parts, four video parts, okay, instead of one big video. But anyway, we'll see you either in the next video part or. Unless something positive happens. Uh. Yeah. This is William H. Morrow. The best way to join our organization is to get your free annual subscription to Newsletter Censored with your gift to support this work. The newsletter of hard-hitting truth and news-fighting censorship and conservative propaganda since 1977. There is nothing out there like the newsletter censored in the mainstream media or the press. This newsletter is the very best way to join and be a part of our organization. We're living the end times, so you need Newsletter Censored. Go to www.newslettercensored.com. Hey, listen, for the real hard hitting truth, you need Newsletter Censored. And now, back to the show. Bye bye. Okay, we're back, and um, excuse me, uh, we are back, and uh, happy St. Patrick's Day week, 2016, this is Progressive Discussions. Let us sink our teeth back into these readings. <clears throat> I know there are there are many everyday annoyances that I notice. I, I'm telling you, Dr. Bill, if if I was allowed to video things as I'm driving, I could easily slap together a reality show based on all the stupid asinine things people do every day. You know, I mean, but. I think I'll get pulled over if I did that. If I started, you know, if I drove with one hand and held up a video device with the other hand, I'm not sure. Or does it only apply to texting? I am not sure. If you're using your hands for something else, you're supposed to have two hands on the wheel. Oh, really? Oh, really? But they, you can't drink? No. You're not supposed to drink beverage? No. Why not? You're supposed to have both hands on the wheel. What if you have one real strong hand that can uh, 
Razzle if you desk. are disabled, there will be accommodations. No. But what, what if I, I need to uh, consume uh, a nice hot cup of... Then you will pull over... Java. And you will do so. Okay. Go okay. ahead. Nothing in this extraordinary of election cycles is quite as anomalous <coughs> as the overwhelming enthusiasm shown by black Americans for Hillary Clinton. Oh my God! This was this is what what was bothering me before the the, the, the statement I made about the South <sighs> and their dismissal of Bernie Sanders, the guy who marched with Martin Luther King and Malcolm X and all those civil rights leaders, and got arrested for protesting. Right. Uh, but they want Hillary. What the hell is Hillary going to do for the poor and minorities? Who, what, what's she going to do? What her hubby do? Back in 1966, 96. She just threw you. With Newt Gingrich. He gutted welfare as we know it. Uh, he gutted out welfare. He ruined it. He signed away Glass-Steagall. And he threw the po folk a few crumbs. Oh, you uh, from the from uh, Shillery and Billery, you're going to get a few crumbs because they're corporatists. From Bernie, you're going to get two handfuls of ripened mangoes yeah. or a whole loaf of bread. I think we're importing mangoes from India now and giving them nuclear information. You know, um, that's our trade uh, policies. You know, well, because they know that India uh, doesn't like Pakistan, <laughs> and Pakistan is Muslim. <laughs> you know, harboring terrorism. <clears throat> Maybe that's why they feel it would buffer. Uh, you know, uh, uh, help make things. Well, they both had a nuclear uh, weapons uh, long before. Muslims, you know, I, no. I, Islam is terrorist for terrorists. They had a nuclear weapon when, uh, what is it, uh, and Hira Gandhi was uh, mm -hmm. uh, El Presidente. Well, mangoes and papayas, Pepe. and I believe the banana, all three are originally from India, you know. They have a, a, a mango festival in India once a year. There are hundreds of different varieties of mangoes. It's fascinating. They even use the green mango in a pickled salad. I, I ate it. I loved it. I thought it was. I thought there were olives. Uh -huh. I thought it was green olive. No, it was green mango. And they also use the green papaya uh, in culinary uh, recipes, like like salads. You know, marinated salads. <laughs> it's awesome. I never knew what it was. From her vote for the disastrous Iraq war, through her continuing support for deeper American involvement in the Middle East, in the form of interventions in Libya and Syria, Clinton has consistently identified herself with policies that have led to the beggaring of our country, a monstrous increase in the national debt and, simultaneously, a reduction in public funds available for social and economic initiatives, infrastructure rebuilding, and the like. This is the great detriment to America's ever-widening underclass, of which black Americans form a significant part. As a group, they claim to have suffered most under the economic policies of recent presidencies, Republican or Democratic. It is remarkable and inexplicable that a group of Americans who might benefit the most from a change in U.S. public spending and the reallocation of resources persist in their misguided support for a candidate whose policies will necessarily diminish such a prospect. Yeah, I mean, with Bernie, they'll get um, free health care. 
for all the a free uh, university uh, education, public university. I mean, uh, 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 paid maternity and paternity leave, uh, um, uh, optimum social programs and food stamps. You won't get that with Hillary. I don't understand their thinking. It's totally illogical. Bernie Sanders would seek to reverse those trends. It is completely mind-boggling why many of your uh, African Americans from the South see value in supporting Hillary Clinton over Bernie Sanders. I, it's just there was no logical uh, reason for doing so. It doesn't make sense. So. Good news for those going gray. Uh, well, you can get just for men. <laughs> A new study has identified the gene responsible for graying hair. Scientists have long known that the gradual disappearance of melanin, the protein that provides hair's color, causes the hair to go gray. But the origin of this process wasn't yet fully understood. When researchers from the University College in London studied the DNA samples of more than 6,000 people of European, African, and Native American descent, they found the gene IRF4. What triggers it though? which sits on the chromosome 6 was responsible for melanin. Although other factors like age and stress cont contributed to growing gray, scientists hope that the identifying this gene could potentially lead them to products that could prevent gray hair instead of just covering up grayness with hair dyes or other coloring methods. The study also examined other facets of hair and hair growth such as unibrows, oh gosh, curly hair, and beards. The study was published in the journal Nature Communications. Well the unibrow uh, solution is, is a pair of tweezers. I use that on myself. <coughs> Tweezers hurt. I don't want no freaking Groucho Marx eyebrows. Ooh. You know? Or gray hairs on my eyebrows. I pluck them right out. Well, pluck you. You know, there's, there's a very clever, uh, famous chicken takeout place called Cluck You. I think it's in Delaware. Ah. <coughs> Cluck You. Little change of pace. Tomato pace. I've been with my fiance for three years, and I'm very much in love. Oh, goody goody for you. A few months ago, I asked to use his phone to look up something on the internet. Here we go. Because my battery had died. It opened up to a gay porn site. Oh. Oh. Interesting. I was shocked. And I asked him if it was something he was looking at. Well, naturally, he, if it was on his phone. He admitted that it was. Nothing like this has happened to me before, so I began asking if that's what he likes and is into. No, it's a valid question. He assured me the answer was no. But he looks at it. He said he looked because he was simply curious about it. He told me he loves women, 
doesn't want to be with men. Said he was just looking. I believe him. But, but, is this normal behavior? You know, usually I have an answer for everything. This time, no, I don't have an answer. I don't know. Well, then we'll have to look into Dear Abby's answer, won't we? I guess so. Well, it seems that Dear Abby took her question to an expert on the subject of adult entertainment viewing, Larry Flint. Oh, she knows Larry Flint? Uh, uh, a sexpert, he's a sexpert. He said that while curiosity is normal, not many heterosexual men make a habit of viewing gay male porn sites. Habit. He added that if your fiancé is a regular consumer of this kind of entertainment, he may have latent homosexual tendencies. I then consulted Dr. Jack Drescher. Dr. Jack, uh, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, Ivan Jackanoff, the Russian doctor. A psychoanalyst. I've <laughs> an expert on gender and sexuality. Ivan Jackanoff, get it? <laughs> oh, oh, help me. Who told me that some people fantasize about people of the same sex, but never act on it. According to Dr. Drescher, what is important <clears throat> is that you and your fiancé are able to talk about sex honestly and openly. Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. If you need more assurances, continue this discussion. Salt and pepper. So that you both will know what you're getting into if your betrothal leads to marriage. Uh -oh. He might he might be getting uh Butt slammed after she marries him. Uh, she, Menage a Twang. You mean she'll have to uh, butt slam him? Strap on dildo? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. While the once proud GOP scrambles to find a way to oppose Donald Trump for the 2016 presidential nomination, we should reflect, reflect, reflect upon what led to the situation in which it now finds itself. Before President Obama was elected in 2008, Sarah Palin. Oh, 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 oh. Sarah Palin, this is all I hear when she talks, and her and uh, Michelle Bachman too, and her stupid daughter Brazen Bristol, who loves the pistol. That's, that's what they sound like. Go ahead. Sarah Palin and others started hinting about Obama's legitimacy claiming he, associated with terrorists, was not born in the United States and was not an American like us. Well, Bernie Sanders said his father was born in Poland, but no one came to, uh, to him to check uh, on his uh, citizenship. Interesting. This led to the so-called birther movement. The birther movement. Encouraged by Trump and endorsed by many in the Tea Party. The Bertha movement. There was little denouncement of these ideas by the Republican leadership. A phrase still circulating today is Take our country back. Back to back to when? 
Paleolithic times. <laughs> Before the Civil War, right? In my opinion, that is code for we don't want a black man in a White House. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You notice how uh, how uh, targeted uh, they are about uh, Ted Cruz's uh, eligibility, citizenship eligibility. They don't seem to be uh, gun ho about finding that out. But Obama, different story. After two failed presidential elections, Republicans want an outsider's voice to follow. While few of the Trump's ideas can become reality without the congressional approval, this matters little to his supporters. Some are legitimately fed up with both parties in Washington. Others form a frightening group of people who apparently find nothing wrong with insulting Mexicans, Muslims, women, war heroes, and the disabled. And gay people. And physical, and people's physical attributes. Oh yeah, I remember that. The Republican Party could have avoided this dilemma by standing up against bigotry, or even better, actually by getting something done in Congress for the people over the last eight years. Yeah. They have no one to blame but themselves. As it says so wisely in the Bible, whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. I thought it was uh, whatever a man sows, he won't have holes in his socks. Oh my God. <clears throat> Three children and one adult took part in the Republican pres presidential debate last Thursday night. Really? The three children engaged in an appalling display of schoolboy insults that only served to demonstrate how unfit they are to hold the nation's highest office. Oh, you're talking about the candidates. <laughs> okay. In contrast, the one adult, Ohio Governor John Kasich, I would say he's the, he's the adult, yes. Showed that he is more qualified to be president than any other three candidates combined. Yeah, the only thing is John Kasich is still a Republican uh, right winger because he wants to he wants to allocate all the spending to the states. He wants the states to take on the responsibility of of uh, spending on its people, you know? Well, I think it's more like Reagan block grants. You just give the yeah. states the money and then they do what they want with it. Yeah, I'm sorry you know, you about You give those. money for education, Yeah. and then they, the state uh, does what the hell it wants. I apologize for those loudmouth uh, idiots outside talking loudly so everybody can hear the business. They sound like a day, 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 day. He refused to lower himself to their level and instead offered thoughtful, common sense responses. Hopefully Republican voters will take notice and will turn their support to him. As an independent voter, I I'm not really attracted much to either party, but I am thinking of declaring as a Republican when the New Jersey primary is held on June 7, so that I can vote for Kasich. I got news for you, probably won't be in there by then. I don't think Kasich uh, has. I think the Rubio's going to be bye bye. I don't think Kasich has the funds to last that long. Possibly that too. 
But he ain't got the uh, poll numbers. He ain't got the delegates. He ain't got not. Isn't it amazing not how? Not. Isn't it amazing how Trump, with all his bigotry, just is so far ahead of all the others? Yeah, makes you think about today's Americans and you know where they're at. It's pretty, uh, pretty frightening. Well, demagogues usually get a lot of people behind them. Well, they can make more trouble. That means they have all these feelings inside of them, and Donald Trump has given them the opportunity to let it all hang out. I hope he will eventually receive the Republican nomination, but. If he does not, I think I will write in his name come November. Well, the Republican Party has stated they do not want Donald Trump to be nominated. They, 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 they all uh, are uh, um, totally dead set against him even being in the in the in the campaign, and and they. Um, I think they're going to try to throw a monkey wrench in there, you know, like they're doing with Bernie Sanders, the DNC. And if he doesn't win, perhaps he would consider moving to New Jersey and running for governor. We certainly need one. <laughs> God. Well, I'll tell you one thing. If he was... I don't understand why... Chris Christie hasn't done it, but you know, I can picture Donald Trump cleaning up the high crime bad areas in New Jersey. I can picture him sending the boys in there to clean house. I just want to add a platitudinous slogan about our wonderful country. Oh, he's a flag waver. How did I guess? I am not interested in making America great again. I am not interested in making America whole again. I am interested in making America sane again. Ooh. So he's willing to accept sanity. At least sanity, if nothing else. Uh, let me guess, it was some idiot from New Jersey, right? I have no idea. I just yeah. turned it over. Yeah. A uh, little. Uh, if if Americans use their brains that God gave them, uh, they would never vote for a conservative. Anyway, what do you got? One more for the road. How are we doing on time? I have been dating my boyfriend for almost seven months. Yeah. We have had our ups and. Many, many downs. Ups and downs, get it. But we are still working on our relationship, physically, emotionally. And recently I've become aware that my boyfriend has been watching porn. Oh, uh, what is what is with these women and their problem with porn? I think they're they're you gotta be very insecure to be that jealous. Be jealous of porn. Uh, I mean, uh, I've I've heard a woman actually get mad because a man wanted to tat have a tattoo of a topless mermaid on his arm. Nice. Jealous of a, of a, of a, of a, a drawing of a woman. <laughs> I mean, they can be extremely insecure. Not uh, not like the, the the men. You know, I mean, worse. I figured it would improve our sex life. Yes, it will. But it has become a daily thing. Oh, she don't want to have sex every day then? What is she, Protestant? What is she, white? She's probably white. Wasp. They don't usually, usually they don't like to have too much sex. I have watched porn constantly with him, yet it doesn't really help at all. Well, women are not turned on by a visual thing. They turn it on by, by words, you know, uh, uh, all the, uh, that's why they like all those nauseating chick flicks. I prefer the real thing to something that's not even real. 
The idiot doesn't understand that the man has to be warmed up like an old carburetor. It is not a light switch. A woman, if a woman's not excited, you know, some women are a pain in the, in the ass. They need they a lot of work to get them ready. A lot of work, you got you know. But if a woman is not quite there yet, there's always a, 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 a lubricant. But a man can't do that. A man, either a man is erected or he's not. You know, same thing with toys. Whenever he downloads pictures, it's always a certain type of white girl. Oh, they're black. I'm not white. Uh, 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 oh, maybe that's what's bothering her. Maybe. And I get jealous. It's an interracial couple, or they're both they're both uh, Latino or black, or, or they don't really say. They don't say. They don't say. Okay, so she's not white. We've established that, and he watches white chicks in porn. Okay, Why I not? can understand her. I could I could feel her uh, uh, insecurity in that situation. You feel her pain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. When I confront him about it, he yells at me. Oh, well, no, that's not nice. He shouldn't. He should listen to her and console her, you know. Uh, I worry that he's doing more than just watching porn. She has legitimate uh, hunches there, you know. And when I ask, he always says that he doesn't have anyone on the side, and he wants only me. I feel like my time is being wasted, and I don't like it. I don't like it. Should I continue to date and live with him? I'm tired of this abusive and neglectful relationship. How do I get the truth out of him? Sodium pentothal? Is that what they call it? Zitrut serum? Zitrut serum. This is Amy Dickinson's answer. Interesting. Look at what is in front of you. You have a guy who, according to you, prefers pornography to the real thing. Why? He doesn't fool around with her that much? You're in a very young relationship which has many, many downs. When you confront him about these issues, he yells at you instead of talking about them. Mm. What more truth could you possibly need? No. Porn has not enhanced your life. It has deadened it. Well, for him to yell at her, you know... He can't even have a real relationship with you. And he sounds too lazy to look elsewhere. He doesn't have to spend enough quality time with her, perhaps? Your description of this relationship is depressing. You don't mention one single positive thing about it. You should not be living with this person. Don't bother looking for more answers about this behavior. It will only delay the inevitable. Focus on your own choices and vow to make better ones in the future. She needs to shit or get off the pot. Like my grandmother used to say, she needs to, if he's not willing to have a serious discussion with her, then I, I agree with uh, Amy Dickinson, or is it Dear Abby? Amy, Dick Amy Dickinson, I agree with her, uh, <coughs> only if the woman is being neglected for real. If the woman feels neglected and he doesn't spend quality time with her sufficiently or at all, then I agree with Amy Dickinson's uh, uh, suggestion. Now, there's a possibility that you're hearing only one side of the story 
and she's playing a big overly dramatic violin and he's and he spends a lot of time with her and they do have sex you know and because there's always two sides of the story then there's the truth right down the middle you know so uh, she's only Amy Dickinson's only hearing her side you know so that's that all right thank you people for joining us for uh, this week's progressive discussions happy st. Patrick's Day uh, 2016 St. Patrick's Day week uh, have a safe one have fun don't drive drunk uh, there will be DWIs out you know on St. Patrick's Day um, uh, evening and uh, just be safe you know uh, don't drive drunk what can I say uh, get a designated driver or something or just don't get drunk you know, do what I do. Just gorge yourself with the uh, corned beef and, and crappage. <laughs> crappage. <laughs> and that's about it. All right. We'll see you. Next time. Uh, boy, it's, it's, a, it's like uh, the middle of starch already. I mean, March. Yeah. Almost. 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 Yeah, what, what do they call it? Unseasonably warm spring, uh, uh, yellow spring. I don't know. I think the term is. All I know is yellow that, spring. Uh, or that old groundhog was pretty correct. The fat rat was right. The groundhog, early spring. You I think, got it. I think he's right. You got it. Bye bye. This has been a Mega Life Twenty One production.